But that's a lot, that's a lot of pieces. I think that's more. It's probably not because we've been noticing that we were wrong every time we pointed out a difference. But that seems like a lot of French pieces. In May of 21, my good friend Shannon Merritt from 901 Games and 901 Toys uh, decided to come by after the pandemic restrictions had been lifted to go through every version of Axis and Allies that had ever been printed. Most of them we had in the studio, some of them we have acquired since then, more on that later. But Renegade Games since then has decided to reprint several of those games. Now they've been kind enough to send us copies of all of those games and we thought it might be fun to make a next chapter video for you. So we're going to open all those games for you. It's going to be 41, 42, Europe and Pacific 1940, and of course, the one everyone's waiting for, 1914. So, in the words of Mr. Shannon Merritt, let's make it hot. <laughs> That's right. You've always wanted to do that, haven't you? Oh yeah, it's, I mean, I, well. I know, yeah, yeah. I know, okay. Hey, uh, Future Gary here. Before you dive into the games with these two jamokes, I have a bit of a confession. Shannon and I were so excited to crack open these games that I didn't plan particularly well. We've been playing these games for so long that I figured that we'd be able to spot the differences between them fairly easily. Not so much. Uh, as you'll see, while we did find a lot of differences, some are more subtle and other times we're just plain wrong. Still, we want to share our opening and exploration of these reprints, but know that not everything that we say during the actual unboxing will be 100% accurate. But to make sure that you get what you came for, I'll be coming back at the end to give you a full and complete list of all of the changes. For now, enjoy the mass unboxing of Renegade Games reprints of Axis and Allies. So, let's start at the very beginning, the easiest and the smallest of the games, the least expensive of the games, uh, 1941. Now, I'm already working on a how to play for that game, so I've already opened this game and done all the punching, but here's some pictures of what that looked like. But we're also going to take a minute and actually open the game and talk about it a little bit with you. So let's take a look. Okay, so 1941, ages 12 and up, two to five players, one to three hours. You've played this version. I have. Is that an accurate... I'd say, I mean, for me, uh, yeah, it's about one to three hours. And uh, it, it it comes to an end pretty pretty quickly once it once things start happening. Uh, uh, it's Most of the time I played it, I played it with uh, new people that sure. I haven't ever played before. Because Which is, this is kind of what this is for. Yeah, it's, it's an introductory game. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, once they get going and once cities start falling, then all of a sudden it kind of just really... Picks up. What I thought was interesting is that the IPC production seems a lot less in this game, mm -hmm. but the cost of everything is pretty much the same. So like Russia only starts with seven IPCs total. It's yeah. And but infantry are still three each. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Right. I mean, it, so it's like uh, okay. The cost all are the same, and you're not making very much. First thing I noticed though when you set this uh, uh, version down is the actual box is smaller than the other 1941 version. Right, so from Hasbro. Mm -hmm. yeah, I kind of like right. the compact. Right, yeah. it's certainly it's going to make it easier to ship, and, and I think it, it's certainly easier to store. Here's the other thing that I really like that they did, is they put the setup chart on mm -hmm. the back, yeah. right? And I, I'm hoping that we see that in some of the other versions as we open them, because mm -hmm. I think this is a really good use of this. The, the, the printed cardboard things are, are, they're okay, but they're like one use. Right. And then you set them aside or they go back in the box and they don't really have any other useful information on them. Mm -hmm. So um, so I think it just makes more sense to just do this. The only downside to this, of course, is like, it can't be, okay, you're the US, go set up your US right. pieces. I'm gonna sit over here and do Japan. You kind of have to mm -hmm. pass it back and forth, well, but there's but there's so few pieces. I was about to say, yeah. <laughs> setup doesn't take very long, for, take this, very long. for this particular game, so. Uh, but, uh, but otherwise the rule book is, Similar to um, what we saw in 42, it is paper. It's not glossy, um, but that's kind of what we've seen in the last several iterations of uh, of this game. So here's the like publisher information. Um, it's just on page 31, and there's a couple of pages in here for notes, I guess, if you want to yeah. write love letters, war stories, or whatever <laughs> it is that you want to do. So I've never you. written notes in the back of an uh, Axis and Allies instruction booklet. Neither have I. Yeah, but they have. They all. I think they all have them. Yeah, yeah, a lot of them. Yeah, I think so. I wonder if anybody, if anybody uses the notes section, let us know. Because I and for what? And for what? Like, maybe recording the games and who's won and stuff like that. Maybe I don't know. Maybe like that if you're like have a, a friendly rivalry and you like, right. hey, you know, Gary won this time, Shannon won this time. Right, a way to keep so, score. Yeah. Or if you've got a game store, 
Oh, yeah. People yeah. could use it to write whether they want or not. Yeah. Epic battle on August 31st. Right. You know, blah, blah, right. blah, blah, right. between. Yeah. Well, here's the punch card for my mm -hmm. art friends who use those as templates. Uh, let's take a look at the map. It is a huge map. Not really. But I suppose it's big for, like, compared to other, like, regular tabletop games, this is a pretty big map. Right. It, especially this way. It's, right. Yeah. It's certainly longer than most. Mm -hmm. uh, but this will fit on most kitchen tables. This is very compact, yeah. very compact, but set up, um, it's still a pretty dynamic game. So, but it does play faster and it's easier because there's not nearly as many different types of units as some of the games we're gonna get into in a minute. As many times as I've played the game, I kind of like playing this version because it's different and I can't get anybody that's played Axis and Allies a lot to play this version. Yeah. Uh, but I kind of like playing it, so I mean, well, it's, I, I would say that it's definitely um, a refresher, right? Like a palate cleanser, I guess yeah. is what I'm trying to say. So like if you've been playing global and you just want something light to kind of throw some dice and, you know, a little bit of cardboard warfare, right. as we say, like then, yeah, then this is a this is a good one for that. So um, what else we got in the box? Um, this is kind of a oh. kind of a fun thing. Lift, yeah. lift for miniatures. Okay. Right, so that's kind of makes it easier to get that yeah. thing out of there. But that's kind of nice. Good. Cool little feature. I've never nice seen design. that. Yeah. Um, and then we have all of the um, pieces. These continue to be unique to the country, which is good news. Um, we get the battle strip, uh, as we saw in the Hasbro printing of 42. Uh, game comes with four dice. It does not come with the plastic stacking chips, mm -hmm. uh, but it does come with um, like these cardboard punch outs that came from the punch out sheet. And they're stackable. Um, you you don't get a ton of them, but it's it's enough to play, um, but not a lot of excess. So if you if you have other copies of Access and Allies, you're probably going to rate it a little bit to 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 make the flow of this a little bit easier. But there are enough pieces to play the game. I can say that for sure. So it is certainly a functional game, um, which is good. And the pieces being unique to the to each country, I think is something that kind of makes Access and Allies special. Mm -hmm. And from what I've been able to tell, the pieces are the same as we've seen in the um, Hasbro printings. Anyway, so yeah, so there's uh, the five countries represented. Did it come with these nice Ziploc bags? It did come with the Ziploc bags. Okay, so Actually, that's that's really great because the other ones you tore open and then you got a whole bunch of loose and you got to get your own Ziploc. Right, right That's right. really great. So. And these are uh, double-sided. Uh, Oh right, right, right. Yeah, so this is this is another change in the uh, Renegade line. They don't have the um, the Hasbro had white on one side and the country on the other, and these are all uh, double sided tokens, which is cool. I guess you spend less time flipping them over. You won't. Uh, I can't do my turn the roundel over and flip it over to see which country you're playing though with this. You know, at the beginning of the game, how oh. I, that's how I do that kind of like randomize right. like. Oh, we can put these Randall's upside down, pick one, and that's who you're playing. You can't do yeah, that with this. Just so. put them in a coffee cup yeah. or something. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right, it'd be right. So that is um, 1941, I think. What is there? Mm -hmm. The back. Yep. Um, Renegade, Hasbro. Yeah. I'm Avalon ready to Health play. Uh, I'm ready to play 1941. You want to play a 41? Yeah. yeah. Well, I'll, I'll play with you. Yeah. Well, I mean, I got 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> The other thing, I don't remember in if the old Hasbro version of this came with IPCs or not. I don't think it did. This does, it did not. This does not. Mm -hmm. It okay, did not. Okay, so you'll need to find poker chips or pretzels and peanuts or whatever it is, or a pen and paper mm -hmm. if you feel like doing math. Um, so, yeah, 1941. Moving on. 1942. We're going to actually open this one. Boom. All right. Plastic. 1942 second edition. Uh, this is the most popular version of the game. Mm -hmm. Sold the most copies um, in from the 2009 version, 2012. This was the second edition that came out in 2012, but it's reprinted now from by Renegade. Um, it was the most that they sold with Hasbro uh, in this franchise, other than the original. That sold like millions of copies. This sold a lot of copies. I don't think as many as the the original I from 86. I think so. Maybe it did, I have no idea. Um, this is the game after 1941 that most people are gonna to jump to and they may just stay here. They may not go into the bigger versions and this is enough for them. And I, I mean, this is the, to me, the the grab off the shelf. It is probably the most sold one 
in our store also because it does have everything. It's big enough to be, you know, a lot more involved than 1941, but it's not so much that you've got to play, you know, as a new player, 10 to 15 hours on the uh, Europe and uh, Pacific stuff together. Even the, the half versions of those are long plays where you can play the whole world in the same amount of time or less. Yeah, so the box here says uh, ages 12 and up, two to five. It says four to six hours. Um, I think that that's probably right. Uh, I'll say in tournament play that it times out at five hours is the maximum. Um, but it, some games are shorter, some games are longer, depending on how it plays out. But but in the overall world of tabletop gaming, this is a, a long play game. Oh, 100%. Right. Uh, let's crack it open. You, right. are, you, yeah, yeah. are you armed, sir? I am. I have a, a handy dandy. All right, cracking the plastic. Yeah, I think I think I think the the ink is brighter and a little more vibrant. Let's find out. I have the Hasbro version here. Let's let's do a quick side by side and see what that looks okay. like. All right, so here is my version of the Hasbro uh, printing, and I, th I it, now. It's also worth noting this is considerably older. This is a brand new version or a brand new copy of the game. But it's not like I leave this sitting in the sun either. Right. Right. So I think side by side, I think, I'm not sure if you can tell from the, the camera, but this is definitely a little more muted. Yeah. This de I mean, I think also the texture is what, it might be a little more coarse on this. I mean, it still has the same texture, but not quite as much. Right. That so it might be, linen. yeah. Yeah. So that it, 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 the lines are crisper on this than on that. So. Yeah. First thing I noticed okay. is like, so from 1941, which had, I believe it said 105 playing pieces. 160. 160? 160? 160? I'm sorry, I don't know why I got 160 plus playing pieces. Okay, 160 plus. I guess they're included in the board. Uh, but this is 410, so significantly more pieces in this than the other version. Right, right, so. right, right. Yeah, that's an that's, that's a excellent, excellent point. A game by Larry Harris. Oh, fresh. That's that fresh 42 smell. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Smells like 1942. <laughs> <laughs> not sure how I feel about that. All right. Uh, rule book. Did they? They did not. They did not. They did not. So we still have the punch cards. Or the, uh, yep, we mm -hmm. have got the player cards. All right. So rule book. Let's start with that. Um, looks the same. My understanding, and I haven't had a chance to go through this line by line yet. I almost certainly will in the not so distant future, but they have corrected several of the errors uh, that were in the 2012 rule book, like how many victory cities there are. Right. Um, Essential information. Yeah. Like I remember when we kind of pointed that out. Mission critical information <laughs> uh, was was kind of left. Um, it was uh, it was not it was not great. So. Yeah, they um, in the objective of the game, which how the war is won. There it is. There you go. Nine standard victory. Nine for the Axis. Ten for the Allies. Thirteen total victory cities. Not twelve. Not twelve. Welcome back to the game, Honolulu. Uh, <laughs> it's so nice to see you there. Um, but yeah, so that um, otherwise, uh, and that of course is correct at every place that it's brought up. Uh, but uh, I'll go through and do a line by line for this, I'm sure, at some point. But uh, for now, it is uh, pretty much the same other than those corrections. And, and if you, um, it's a nice page here for notes mm -hmm. for whatever the hell that's for. Okay, so rule book. Now we've got our roundels, country markers that are, again, double sided. Mm -hmm. So that's cool. Uh, we've got another punch board here that has the 12 uh, industrial complexes. And we've got our battle strip to punch out here. And then the five, of course, setup markers. Um, oh, here's another thing that they fixed. You remember Germany starts with 41 and not 40, right. which is what was printed. And UK starts with 31 and not 30, uh, which was another typographical error that was in the 2012 version. So I'm glad to see that that's fixed because that was always, um, you know, problematic problem, right? Mm -hmm. Like, cause you'd, oh wait, I was supposed to start with um, that, but um, while they have printed on the back of these now, they're not white anymore, the backs of the- uh, That's uh, kind of a nice, this is pretty. Right, so this is now oh. printed on the back. This was white in the older version, so um, 
kind of nice to have a little bit of a finish on it. These are double sided. These are double sided. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So that's nice because sometimes they get flipped over and you're like, what is that? And like, that's good. Right. Like that. So interesting that they chose to print on this side, but not any information. Mm -mm. Right. Um, maybe this is something that can be changed later. I can see where it would be tricky from a from a typeset point of view because they're different sizes. Right. Right. Let's say you know order if you did order a turn and stuff like that, and you put it like it wouldn't be the same for everything. So yeah, you'd have to. Yeah, kinda, you'd have to do some work. That's for probably that. why they didn't do yeah. that. Yeah, but anyway, so it's nice that it's still printed on the other side. Uh, we will double back to the map in a second. Hey, we got our little holes here again. That's nice, um, and some extra Ziploc bags. Hey, look at there! It came with Ziploc bags. Yeah. Yay! Ready got plastic. Roundels. Right. We're, uh, yeah, the stacking tokens, we got those. Now, this is this is a thing here. These are the same as they were in 42 and 2012, but not the same as they were in the Pacific versions, right? You remember the, the, the older versions, they didn't, or the, um, the 1940s, mm -hmm. because they had the ones that like had the real narrow slits. Right, and they're, they're, they're larger. Right. And these are a little bit smaller with a with a deeper groove, but they actually have access now. printed on them, uh, which is kind of cool. Um, but they don't stack with the like the old old ones. Right. right. No. Yeah. So, they, you, they, so it's kind of weird. I've, I I have a box that I have all my chips in, and I kind of keep those separate from. Right. You end up with a segregated yeah. box, right, for your chips, right? So anyway, so so but it's but we do get chips versus just the cardboard tokens. So. Uh, this game is a little bit more expensive, but not horribly expensive. What is this? What's this? Do you know offhand what this retails right now? Store? I think it's around. I want to say around eighty dollars, seventy nine, ninety nine, something like that. Okay. Maybe it's a little cheaper than that, but maybe it's seventy four, ninety nine. Uh, forty one. Forty one is around thirty to forty dollars. I can't remember right offhand. Yeah. Uh, I don't think we've had a forty one in a, in a minute, but I do remember it being thirty to forty dollars. Um, the uh, I know that the 1940s are 120. Okay. That, that's retail. Right. 119.99. So yeah, so we get tokens here, and we get again two extra bags. I'm not 100 percent sure what these are for. We get the six dice, which is the same as we were getting before. Uh, okay, yeah, these have tape on them that hold them closed, but they are um, their own little plastic bags. These are just cool. for convenience. These are just convenient bags. I don't know. You just use them for anything you can put it's like in a, there. Like an extra gift. Like yeah. A I bonus mean, gift. Yeah. I think it's cool. I think it's great. Uh, to have yeah. Extra bags. For sure. I always like. I mean, you could maybe put for all, the toe. Oh. You, you could do roundels. You could do. But I always put the roundels in the bag with the country. Yeah, I do too. But maybe you know the industrial complexes and stuff like that. I don't know. Yeah, the complexes for mm -hmm. sure. Maybe. Well, I would say, but these don't. These that's not gonna fit. That's not fitting. Mm -hmm. Anyway. So we got, I don't know, we got plastic bags galore, as it <laughs> turns out. Um, so yeah, so we got the pieces, and uh, here is what they look like all laid out. Cool, so um, let's look at the map. So basically no major changes, except for the, the, the rule book is updated because of the uh, typos last time, or the right. uh, and so that's, outright errors. That's fantastic. So. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, so um, 1942 map is still a two-piece uh, map, and it um, is pretty good size. Uh, here are the specific measurements for this. I want to say that this is different. Yeah, so they put the country markers in their starting positions, which is mm -hmm. not in the uh, 2012 version. I have so many uh, copies, different copies of it, they all kind of just blend together. Sure. So. If only we had a copy of the old version. If only we had a copy of it. Oh, no, no, it, it is, is on a, there. I don't know why it looks different to me. Let's see. So the countries are not marked on this. But they are marked on this. Yeah. And they are correct. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, 31 and 41. 41. Yeah. Let's so, see. Does this... The, the numbers are definitely darker and more visible. Well, it's the same size. 
Uh, well, here, so you wanna see a perfect side-by-side? -side? There you go. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. So this is the old Hasbro printing. This is the new Renegade printing. So we do have a little bit of color variation. Mm, the Not seas are definitely darker. Yeah, the, the oceans are definitely, the sea zones are definitely darker. The numbers uh, are much more visible. Yeah, these are much uh, easier to yeah. see. Mm -hmm. um, went to a bolder font here. Same font, but definitely with a bold. Mm -hmm. They hit the uh, bold. They hit the bold button. Yeah, they hit the bold on button. On the font here. So that's, um, that's cool. Yeah. Uh, I think I, I, I wonder, so for my colorblind friends, like, I think this is better than this. Do you Still think? a lot of red green. Yeah, I mean it's a lot of red green, which you know yeah. anybody that's watched this before knows is kind of a pet peeve of mine. But um, but no, I think I think it looks pretty good. Mm -hmm. So I mean, I, I, you know, if if I if they weren't right side by side, I would say that they were basically the same, other yeah. than the numbers being added up here. So. So yeah. trying hard to find little differences. Yeah. Yeah. But no, that's all right. Yeah. So yeah. So that's that. So I know it says it seems like a little thing, but the bolder numbers really makes a difference for me. Yeah. Like it's the I being able to see it. Well, mm. some of us are getting older. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. So, uh, yeah. Um so yeah, so that's cool. So um yeah. 1942, second edition. No. All right, here we go. And uh, setup time on this one, I think if you're doing it by yourself, 25 minutes? Yeah, let's just say 25, 30 minutes. Yeah. Um, it's better with friends. <laughs> it, it, it's a, well, it's, it's 25, 30 minutes if I'm setting it by myself with an additional 10 minutes for everybody to fix all the things that I didn't set up correctly. So that's my... Uh, yeah, that's uh, <laughs> that, that checks out. <laughs> There's always, I always miss something. All right, Europe or Pacific? Oh, let's do, uh, um, let's do my favorite. Let's do Europe. Europe. Yeah. Oh. A lot of people like Europe. I, I like Europe. It's lovely. I've been a few times. Not in 1940, <laughs> but I'm not that old, but yes. All right. Plastic. It still says second edition on there, so it's not like third edition or right, they haven't right, right. changed the edition. Yet. Exactly, and that's so. a, that's a really good that's a really good thing to point out is that this is this is not designed. None of these games are designed as a new version right. of the game. They are designed to be reprints with some minor modifications of the second editions of their respective games, except for 1914, which didn't, doesn't have a second edition. No, right. All right, so. 1940. Europa. Again, great color. Yeah. I think that's really sharp. So let's see what we have uh, on the inside. We have nothing in the box. All right. Ooh. Heavy rule book. We know that. that is a, we, we know that. That is a significant rule book. Oh, okay. Insert. Yes, yeah, so and we have our insert. Okay. Um, again, uh, we've got separate setup charts, and on this game, you're gonna kind of want the second, this the separate setup charts. Well, you get it with your box on this. Setup charts are on the box. Right. Yeah. Right. 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 So, so this is like the Mac Daddy version of Axis and Allies, right? This is the 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 big one, as they say, uh, or half of the big one, um, and it's the rule book here is. Um, it's a scant 43 uh, pages long. And this version introduces uh, air bases, naval bases, uh, mechanized uh, infantry, and all. Uh, it has technology that you can develop and pay for. Uh, it has national objectives. Which is my favorite part. Which is kind of, yeah, it kind of steers the strategy of the game a bit. Mm -hmm. uh, but more importantly, this version can be played side by side with the Pacific version, which we're gonna look at in a second, to, to make a game that's called Global. Um, and it is, that's a monster. Like that, that's a monster game. It's a lot of fun, but you need to, uh, you need to have some time. The roundels are one-sided in this, except for the, the planes and, because in, in the old version, I know that the backs of these are not printed on. Right. But they chose to not do it on these. I wonder what the reasoning was for that. 
I don't know. So, and then we have a battle strip again, um, and then a breakthrough chart that you can keep track of your um, discoveries, as it were. Uh, we're going to double back to the giant two-piece map here in just a second. I remember the first time I opened up the original version and it had these boxes with all the setup chart. Man, I was like, oh my gosh, why weren't they doing this the whole time? This makes it so much better and so much easier. So I, I, I really appreciate these boxes. So uh, this game gives you the ability to uh, introduce the uh, al the access, rather, get Italy as a as a playable country. Um, France for the allies, and but no China, right? China's no China. Still, China's still the, played by the, and the Pacific. That's in the Pacific in version. The Pacific right, version. Right. So, but we do get Italy. And for any uh, newbies to this game, after you played a few rounds, Italy is one of the most fun countries to play if you know what you're doing. So it's always kind of a sleeper thing. That if you can get good at Italy on this version, your your German compadre will like you very much. So yeah, it can make a big difference for yeah. sure. Um, all right, so um, we have dice in the Italy box and all of the the chips. Okay, hmm. so six dice in the Italy box. We'll see if there's more dice in other boxes. But these are all the Italian pieces. Um, then Italian infantry and it's separate. Yeah, okay. so those are that's an interesting way to do that, I suppose. So these are all the sea units and air units and other land units, but all the infantry are in here. Now, I'm curious interesting. About. All right. Okay, so they did it separately in 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 this one too. So okay. we have infantry and infantry and your not resealable like the other ones. Right, but we got the box. Oh yeah, we got that's right. You got the box. Right. But so the Americans and the French share a box. And if France ever needs this many pieces, something has gone terribly wrong with yeah. the axis. Yeah, it's a, it's a so, bad day. Yeah, yeah. But that's a, lot, that's a lot of pieces. I think that's more, it's probably not because we've been noticing that we were wrong every time we pointed out a difference. <laughs> but that seems like a lot of French pieces. Yeah, yeah, so, it does. It does seem like a lot yeah. of French My pieces. My son would be happy. He always likes to, he always likes to play France. Plays the French. Yes. What? Uh, there's a there's a shirt out there now. That, what is it? Fortune favors the bold. Except for France. <laughs> Unless you're <laughs> French, right? Yeah. Because they uh, they typically don't fare very well in these particular games. But, yeah. um, which is you know, kind of historically accurate. Right. Um, all right. So the Americans lots of pieces. The French lots of pieces. But there weren't any more dice in here, so we got the six dice that that came with. So those are there there, and the Americans and. The Italians. All the roundels are still on the punch card, so those would also go in here. Um, Soviet pieces. Again, separate infantry. I, it looks like they might get more infantry than anybody else, which that would make some sense. Um, they have lots of sea and air units, most of which they will never build. <laughs> but it's good that they have the, they give the option. UK. Guys, separate sea and air units. And lastly, the Germans. Uh, hard to see here, I'm sure, because these pieces are all black in the side of the plastic bag, but. So those are all the pieces. Nothing on the bottom of the boxes. No, but I, I, it is a bolder print again. Yeah, this does High, higher. Yeah. It's a, it, much better, much easier to read. Higher print quality. Yeah. Okay, so let's take a look at this map. So if you're going to play this version and you've never played it before, you're going to need a big table. So even think, just playing half of it, yeah. this is a large map. I think we're going to need a bigger boat. That's correct. Once again, don't look for Japan on this because... Right, Japan's not in this game. Japan's not in that one. Okay. Okay, so things to notice right away when you're looking at this game, and we talked more about this in the other video, but it's deeper, right? It's compared to length. So all of the other maps were kind of rectangular. This is much more square. So it is... Uh, again, I think the... I think 
You know what? I think here's what's the difference. They they put a black outline. That's exactly, that's around exactly all the what words. I was noticing. It, it they stand out so much better. Yeah, this is much clearer. It does it does make it a look a little bit busier because I think mm -hmm. the words are bigger as well. I'm not 100 percent sure, but but I think from a gameplay point of view, it's going to make it much easier to see and, what the hell is going on. And I like it. I do too. Yeah, I I don't ever use the. I find that whenever I try to use this, it always ends up just taking more time because invariably it gets bumped or did I move it when I took over Southern France? I can't right. remember, right? All right, so that is Europe 1940. All right. Oh yeah. All right, and oh, there's the back. Again, this is a game in action. Obviously, this is not the setup. Um, extra large, 35 by 32 map. Man, so, I, look at that. Look at all those French troops. Right? This would be a big game for France. <laughs> uh, or maybe we're just playing France wrong. Maybe we are. Maybe that's a user error. No. And to me, it looks like somebody played Germany wrong. But, you know. Right. Well, yeah, maybe. <laughs> okay. So, this is 1940 Europe. This is... 1940 Pacific. I didn't realize this until just now, but um, they've included a little joke on the cover. Um, they say that the game is for ages 12 and up, two to five players, and that is very true, but I have never seen a game of this last less than six hours. Oh, 100%. No, um, uh -uh. So... Not even the separate versions. No, I'm saying just this game by yeah. itself. I've never seen a game that was less than six hours. Yeah. So... This is seven hours, that, eight hours, that's, probably. That's somebody's speed playing or... Experience play, yeah. for sure, maybe, if somebody resigns. Uh, but that is cooking fast mm -hmm. for, for this game. So I think this is probably closer to seven or eight hours uh, if you're going to play this game by itself. So, And same thing with this one. For sure, each one of these games. I will say, though, I think Pacific might play a little bit faster than Europe. That's interesting you say that because Japan is a, is a slog. Let me tell you why. This game has two players playing the Axis and two players playing the Allies, mm -hmm. right? Uh, yep. This one is a four-player game, right, where three people are playing the Allies and one person is playing the Axis. That's true. So the Axis player doesn't have to negotiate with anybody, mm -hmm. right? So I think that's why this game is going to play more quickly than this one. Part of the fun of the game is working it out with your ally as to, or your teammate as to you know which way the you know how to move or whatever to debate the analysis of it, but it does slow the game. So when it's you know a, a, if you were playing this game one on one, right? If you're playing all the allies versus all the axis, you and me versus you're just playing this game, then yeah, maybe, maybe four to six hours. Well, you know, I think you got to put four to six hours because. Uh... If you don't, if you put 10 to 12 hours, people may go, Yeah, mm, maybe not. Yeah. But no, I mean, it, it can be, it, it can be done. Yeah. It can be done. But they don't mention, like, when you put the games together, it's four to six plus four plus six. Right, so. right. right, right, right. La Pacifica. A darker blue tone in the box uh, compared to the green and blues that we've seen before, the gray. Uh, so I like this. I'm a big fan of this particular box cover. Great colors, and it's nice to see the different historical figures and flags, and I think that's pretty cool. So, all right, we've we got the Marine Raiders down there. Pretty cool. It's very cool. Yeah, Seabees, Navy. <laughs> okay. Okay, so this is the um, Pacific version, and the rules for Europe and Pacific, the, the core mechanic rules, are the same. Now, there are a couple of things that are specific to this game, such as... The kamikaze markers mm -hmm. and the China. And, yeah, so there's rules that are specific to China because they are not a full-fledged power, right. really, at that point. Um, so they've got limitations. Controlled by the American player. Right. 
So, so the that's interesting. The bonsai or the uh, kamikaze markers are double sided, but like all the that. others, like all that. the others are uh, are black on the on the opposite side. So that's interesting. Uh, again, in this game, you've got the UK, the Americans, the Japanese, lots of Japanese, mm -hmm. and of course the uh, Anzac Australian New Zealand collaborative down there. And then this is the markers for China. So very cool. Um, Again, battle strip, and you've got all the different uh, units that are uh, shown here. Uh, these are the symbols for air bases, for naval ports, minor and major industrial complexes. Um, again, all of those are double-sided, which is handy. And um, we've got some printing on this side for the casualty stuff, or at least some background stuff. So that's cool. Again, another flyer. Same flyer, by the way, in every one of the games. Um, before we get to the rule book, or rather, before we get to the map, the rule book uh, is basically the same uh, in terms of print quality. Um, I'm curious if it has the same, yeah, yep. the same, like... Um, That's what I was looking at, too. Yeah, yeah. But, you know what? If this doesn't have a spot for notes, I'm going to be very disappointed. <laughs> oh, I don't think it does. Oh, it's keep... Uh, oh, is That's that the it. last page? That's the last page. Oh, uh, you got to keep your notes all on the Europe version. Oh. Wait, did the Europe rulebook have a notes? I thought we saw that. Oh, the, man, we are falling down here, man. Does the Europe version have? It does not. It does not. We're not going to be able to keep notes. How? However, will we keep track? I don't know. I don't know. No notes. No notes in the global game. You'll have to. You'll have to get your pay, buy your own notepad. <laughs> So, rule book, no notes, but basically the same print quality. We will double back to the map. The units, Japan starts with 8 billion units on the board. Uh, they are the 800 pound gorilla, because the Americans aren't really in the war just yet. This is 1940, so they have not been really producing a whole lot of stuff. So they don't start with a ton on the board, but as soon as they get involved, they get a massive IPC bump and they're able to really kind of, given enough time, they can, they can run they can, they can rule rule the board, especially in this version. Yeah. I, I bet you the dice and such are in the Anzac. You're probably. they don't have a lot of a... You're very smart. And I was wrong. <gasps> what? All right, so more American units here. Lots of sea units, of course. Very few infantry, but... Yeah. yeah, I think it's fair to say yeah. that the Pacific version um, definitely leans more heavily into the naval 100%. side of all of it um, versus the land territorial control that you see in Europe. Um, China gets its own box? I bet the dice are in there. Yeah, there that makes go. more sense, right? Yeah. Um, again, more units. Six dice. Six big dice. And only infantry for China because you cannot build anything else. Right. So in one version, I think you can build artillery if certain conditions are met, but I'm not sure if it's in this version. Yeah. Uh, you po they probably borrow artillery from the United States if they are able to get it. Yeah, if they, have the, if they control the Burma Road. Right. I think that's what the condition was. Then they can also build artillery. But I think you're right. I think you get them from the Americans because there don't appear to be any Chinese artillery pieces. So. Um, and then the tokens are the same as, of course, in the Europe version, but different from 42. So, um, so no big surprises here. Oh, so again, there's only one axis power being represented in this game. So you end up with, uh, if you play all four players compared to the five players that you can play in the Europe version, it is a one on three game or three on one. Right. I suppose if you're Japan, you have all these pieces, it might be considered one on three. All right, let's look at this map. Lots of blue. A lot of blue. They used all the blue ink. Interesting that 
it goes one to forty on the European map, mm. and it goes one to forty on this map. But when you put them together, it's going to be forty, 40 and one to one forty. 40. So you're going to have to keep your IPCs probably on a separate, in a, like on a separate piece of paper or a notepad. Right. So you could absolutely do that. I wonder though, like, I wonder if I could on the fly like add forty to. 10 to know that I had 50 IPCs. I could. I could. But somebody like me can't math very well like that. Well, you're, so I'd be like, oh, what? Hold on, what? You were you were a... English major. <laughs> right. But that's why I was an English major, because I don't math well. That's right. So. The maths are hard. <laughs> um, so I think this is a great map. Again, they've, they've gone through and done the... Um, the black outline over the text, mm -hmm. which I think really, and I think that maybe the print is actually a little bit bigger the, than we saw in the Hasbro version. So I, I think they've done they a really definitely, nice job. The, 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 the territory uh, names definitely pop a lot more than the other versions. For sure, for sure, for sure. I, I would like to show you now what global would look like, but my table is not big enough to do that. And I have a pretty big table. So here is a picture of someone playing global and use the person in the picture for scale because it's giant. It's a big, big game, uh, but it's a lot of fun. And you, you really get the feel of being like a general in a war room, right? 100%. And you're like moving the pieces around and you're kind of looking out over everything that's happening. And um, I, I like to say that this is a game that puts like the armchair generals to the test. Yeah, I, I've enjoyed playing this game uh the the one of the major issues with this game is getting people to be able to commit to that long slog or over the weekend thing but it is most of the time the most fun i've had playing uh access and allies when you have enough people to play a whole game it's just it's because of exactly what you just said it feels like in when you when I was a kid and I used to watch movies about World War II and they had the big maps and they're moving the pieces and, you know, and, you know, for actual strategy, but they showed what the war rooms looked like. This is for me that I can, I feel like I'm, you know, in charge of a whole, you know, force and I'm moving it just like those generals did, you know, back when they were strategizing. And right. I, and I really like, not that you can't get that feel from the other games, but on this on massive scale, yeah, the scope of it, this, it, it's it's right. just so great. I mean, yeah. it's awesome. All right, last but not least, the World War One version of Axis and Allies, um, the hard to find until recently. Now you can get it on the Renegade website and in your local game store, right. and uh, also one of the most anticipated re-releases. Yeah, the price for this, like on eBay for oh. secondhand copies, of this got kind of crazy before the Renegade reprint. I mean, they were. Four hundred dollars. Yeah, I, I was looking. I have a copy. I actually bought it for my son, and he's off in the Marines, and I'm got it at home. And that price kept going up and up and up, and I was like, I could sell that. <laughs> it right. was. I mean, it really went crazy. It was four or five hundred dollars sometimes. It, it, it was amazing. If it was sealed, it could go really high for so, sure. But now, go get it. You man. Can get it. There it is. Bom, bom, bom. There are going to be so many people happy about this game. Oh, yeah. It's just a different animal. It's, it, a, fun, it's a fun game. Yeah, I've played this a couple times, and I've, I've enjoyed it every single time. So well, let's uh, push the back. Cut the plastic. Let's make the plastic. Oh, <laughs> man. It's a new knife. You're trying to be cool. It's a new knife. Yeah. It's like a surgeon. Cotton for the very first time. Uh, I'm waiting for it. And I get to do the thing this time. Do the thing. <laughs> okay, so, 1914, World War I, 1914, 400 plus uh, playing pieces, a game by Larry Harris, for sure, for sure. Um, this game, obviously set in 1914, plays 1914 to 1918 uh, is, the, is the objective. Um, 12 and up, two to eight players, which is, um, unless you're going to play global, right. this is the most players that you could get in any version of Axis and Allies, and it says four to six hours. And I uh, think that's... I've never 
finished it, but I've only played it a few times, and I had to go back and forth on the rules because there were some things I weren't with. So maybe my games were elongated because of that. But yeah. So obviously, big technological differences between 1914 and the uh, 1940, 1941, 1942. So we've got you know biplanes here. They can land in territories you just took. Uh, they there's just lots of different kind of smaller rules yeah. to it. I hope they. I mean the map before was beautiful. It was probably the prettiest map as far as color wise yeah, I, and things like that and the way it was orientated on the on the actual board. Right. So I'm I'm excited to see what this looks like cuz I like the improvements of the other maps. Yeah, for sure. So let's, let's see what we got here. Huh? Oh yeah. Love all these bright colors. Yeah. Oh. Yep. All right. So, same flyer. Um 1914 same basic style for the uh, rule book. We have um, some images here uh, in play. And setup charts are here. But those, oh, are, those, that, those that, are just that, pictures that, of the storage yeah. boxes, right? But yeah, we got roundels. Our rule book here is not as long as the other one. This one is only 24 pages. But I don't know what you're going to do if you need to take notes because there's no note page. No here. notes. But uh, it still is a very cool looking little book. And it is. They do a nice job. Um, they're, again, pretty liberal with the margins, <laughs> which I'm fine with. It's just an unusual thing. Uh, nice. Well, that's great. Oh, the, 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 just, graphics, the graphics on this game are the best. Uh, it, yeah. I mean, I mean, I hate to jump ahead. Yeah. But, but man, the battle board is always so cool. It came right out of there. Sorry That's about right. that. It's not mint anymore. Damn it. So, uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, this I've always liked this battle board, um, even though at first it was so confusing because it was different than all the other games. Yeah, sure. But uh, once you understand it, you got it. Uh, it's just really neat. Yeah, so. there's a lot, uh, in this version of the game, there's a lot more like, if then scenarios, right? right? If you have this, then this happens. Like if you've got this type of unit, then this type of unit gets a bonus, mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. So so it's nice to have a quality battle board versus the strips that we've been looking at before. Uh, it's nice to have a, a battle board that like makes that easier to understand, right? So that's kind of what these arrows are for, so. And it's uh, black on the back side. Mm -hmm. uh, hey. I mean, that's just appealing to the eye with all the it primary really colors. It really is. Yeah. Um, keep away from little fingers because they kind of look like candy. So, <laughs> um, you don't want them eating your, your German roundels, right? Okay, so in this version of the game, we have the Americans, the Ottoman Empire, the Italians, the Russians. This is pre-Soviets, right. right? So this is the Russians. Germans, the UK, of course, the French, la, la France. They do a little better in this game. Yeah, a little better. Than a little better. in the other versions of the game. So that's that's good for them. And then, of course, uh, Austria, Hungary mm -hmm. is what those guys are. Again, this is uh, one sided roundels on this in this particular version, but beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous. Uh, we'll come back to the map in just a minute. Oh, look at this. Oh, yeah. I've always liked these boxes. Yeah. I just like the way they designed this game. Even the original design was, was, mm -hmm. it was cool because it was different. Yeah. But uh, um, I just, like the color palette, I like the way they did it, and nice, lots of roundels, lots of small dice, lots of tiny dice. Yeah, yeah. Tiny, tiny dice. So we got a bag of mini dice. That's interesting. Yeah. So we got a bag of roundels here. There's uh, light blue and dark blue for the allies, and then red and dark red for the central powers. Okay. Okay. And apparently the light color is one, and the dark color is five. That's an interesting. Uh, I, I I don't remember that how they did that in the first game. Me neither. Um, but uh, interesting choice. We'll see how that works out next time we play it. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so there's those plus 36. Lot, lots of dice. 36 minutes. You dice. like dice. This right. is the game. Obviously. That's the most dice in an Axe Allies game since the original Milton Bradley. I will tell you that, that this is more dice than we have seen today. Yeah, oh yeah. In all of the games that we've opened so combined. far, combined. There's not 36 dice, so that's that's. Again, it's a lot of dice. It's a lot of dice. It's a lot of rolling in this game, though. Yeah, that's true. I'm excited about to see that. I love 
the colors on these things. So obviously the ships and everything are different because right. they're World War Two, I mean, World War One. I, I mean. Right. Yeah. So that is a really interesting point. Like all the molds are different for these games because obviously the soldiers looked different and the ships looked different and the their the armor or tanks as they as they were are obviously very different. So that's pretty cool. Um, the Austria-Hungary is a very pretty green. That is a nice green. Love it, love it. Russians are brown, which is consistent with the other games. This is my favorite color in the game. I don't know why. The Ottoman Empire's like an aqua. Yeah, very pretty. That is pretty cool. It's the simple things, right? You know. Hmm. Interesting. The Italians are orange, like a burnt sienna. They're almost the same color in the in the Europe. They're a little. I think like they're more brown. brown. They're more brown. Yeah, you're, yeah, yeah, a little yeah. darker. Yeah, yeah. It's just kind of a cross between Japan and Italy, right? There. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good. Word. Um. At least they're not yellow and yellow like the <laughs> Bradley version. Right. Exactly. <laughs> Nice dark green for yeah. the Americans. Yep, yep. Oh, this is gonna be bright, bright blue. Bam! Oh, yeah, look at that. That stands out on a board. Yeah, that's a whole thing. Yeah. You can see those from space. Mm -hmm. I like this, like an electric blue. Right. Yeah. Exactly. All right. So that's cool. So those are all the pieces. Very pretty game once it's all set up. It really, it really is yeah. beautiful. Let's look at this map. This is one of my favorite Axis and Allies maps. Just, I know we said it before, but it's just so cool and different. Uh, I only have one problem with it, and we'll talk about that in we'll, just a we'll, second. We'll see if they fixed it. There you go. There you go. All is right with the world. So it is. So it is. Okay, so, man, that's a lot of color. It's a lot of color. I like it. And then when we get, you get all the nations on there and they all got their really different colors and they really pop, man, it looks really great. Yes, it does. Um, it probably looks like this. One day you'll be able to do that too. Oh, man, that was really cool. <laughs> so here's the big thing, right, about like this map is that it is turned and basically north is here and south is that corner over there right so it's it's a it's a whole different kind of look at the world and it does take a minute to get used to it does um i will say the times i've played this game it does make it the way it's uh, orientated is it makes it easier to play like if you're across the board, it, sure. it makes it so much easier than because some of the Axis and Allies games, if you're playing, you know, here, and you got guys way over there, it's really hard to to move. But this, it's nice and compact. It's got everything within hands reach for well, the most part. But at the same time, though, I think the spaces are just about the right size. I mean, this area, of course, is going to get a little crowded because, you know, it's Central Europe during World right. War One, right? Of course, it's going to be a little bit crowded. But I think that they've done a nice job of, I mean, of course they're blowing the scale. Like Europe is not the same size as Africa. Right. right. Well, see, if you notice that's supposed to be looking down that on your, it's the, it's bending. As, as if it were round. Yeah. Right. So yeah. if you, if we were to take this map and draw it up, mm -hmm. right. And make it a dome, then, then that makes more sense. But right. because we forced the world to flat. a flat view, it makes it look like Europe and Africa are the same size. But that works well for gameplay, right? Because otherwise, if this were to scale, you'd never be able to get all your units in there. Right. So, and some people get really weird about that, but but that's the, the gist of, of why it happens that way. So, but I think it's a very cool map. I think very it's cool map. And okay. Nineteen fourteen. Local game store. Call them. Go there today. And if they ha don't have it, have them order it for you. They can get it for you. Yeah. Don't be afraid to walk up to, just quick side note, um, don't be afraid to go into your local game store uh, and ask them if they have these things. And if they don't, 
uh, just they can order it. They have distributors. They you know they can get these games. They're pretty readily available uh, now. They are. They were hard to get before. Right. Um, but you know the, most game store people are in it to 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 make a living. And selling products is what they how they make their living. So they're more than likely are going to order that for you. So and it doesn't cost any extra to special order it. So here they are, all five of the Access Analyze games that Renegade Game Studios now has in production, and Europe and Pacific 1940, World War II 1940 uh, 1914 rather, 1942 Second Edition and 1941. Um, Available at their Renegade website, but also at your local game store. As promised, I've returned to walk you through all the actual changes, updates, and corrections that Renegade Games has made for this printing of Axis and Allies. But first, I want to send a big thank you to the Renegade team for sending us these games in the first place and for helping us assemble this semi-official list. Now I'm going to walk through all the changes one by one, but if you're a reader, a printed version of this list is also linked in the description. Now, spoiler alert, the vast majority of the changes for the rulebooks and the maps have been taken directly from the FAQs and errata that have been out for years. Renegade has made all of those adjustments to the various versions. Those are also linked in the description below. Now, beyond the FAQ and the errata issues, they also worked with Larry Harris, Kevin Chapman, and other members of the community to bring us these excellent reprints. Let's jump in. First up, Access and Allies 1941. The Hasbro printing of 1941 used to come in a box that was the same size as the 1942 version. Now obviously the new box is much smaller, but the component count is the same. The next big issue is this uh, tray false floor thingy that the game came in. It used to be all black, but now it has this promotional material printed on it. They also moved the finger hole from the middle to the corner here. Moving on to the punch board. The punch board, it used to be white on both sides, but now it is double-sided, and all of the national markers are also double-sided as well. But perhaps the biggest improvement was switching out the single-use plastic bags for the Ziploc bag. This seemingly small change is actually a significant quality of life improvement. And as a bonus, they gave us two extra bags. I'm not sure what they're for. Uh, maybe for the tokens, our, our hopes and dreams. I, I really don't know. But I'm never going to say no to extra storage. Now, there weren't any changes to the 1941 map, but they did correct a misprint on the back cover of the rule book. The US starts the game with 17 IPCs rather than the 15 that was on the Hasbro print. Next up is 1942 Second Edition. They made these significant corrections to the rule book from the FAQs and the errata, and all the same quality of life improvements that they did in 1941. So the tray has the promotional stuff written on it, the hole's been moved to the corner, the tokens are double sided, and we got the handy resealable plastic bags. and the extra bonus two bags. However, there are three cosmetic changes to the map. They added the starting IPC values to the IPC tracker. They added 1942 to the Axis and Allies logo. And something I never noticed before, they actually moved Honolulu, the victory city, to the correct Hawaiian island. Huh. Before we move on to 1940 Europe and Pacific, there was a section added to the rule books for 1942.2 and both 1940 games that wasn't previously mentioned in the FAQs, so this seemed like a good time to talk about it. There's been a new clarification in the anti-aircraft artillery unit description. So if you'll open your hymnals to page 25 in the old Hasbro version, the old rule reads like this. No combat value. It can, however, be taken as a casualty. If the territory controlling AAA units and no combat units is attacked, the AA units are automatically destroyed. AA units may never attack. This line mistakenly led some folks to think that AA guns didn't get to shoot at attacking air units if it was in a territory alone. That instead it just died. Not so much. So here's the rewrite of that section in the 1942.2 and 1940 rulebooks that Renegade just put out that hopes to clear that up. If you're still following along at home, in your new hymnal in the 1942.2 book, it is on page 24. No combat value. Even though anti-aircraft artillery, AAA units, can defend either alone or with other units, it has a combat value of zero. This means that a AAA unit cannot fire in the defending unit's fire step. It can, however, be taken as a casualty. Here's the important bit. If a territory defending AAA units and no combat units is attacked, the AAA units are automatically destroyed after they fire. See air defense below. But if only air units are attacking, at least one of them must survive the air defense in order to destroy the AAA. AAA units may never attack. 
So here's a quick translation. If the Germans send a single bomber to try to pick off a Russian AA gun that's wandered away from its comrades, they will still conduct combat. The AA gun will get to fire first. If it shoots down the bomber, the AA gun survives. If it misses, then it's immediately removed. Does that make sense? If not, drop your questions in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Moving on. Now, I think that we can talk about 1940 Europe and Pacific at the same time. We're all adults here. The punch boards used to be solid black on the back. Now the naval bases, the air bases, and all the complexes are double-sided, which is nice. But unlike the other versions, the control markers are still black on the back. Not really sure why, but that's what they look like. They also added the gray texture to the back of the R&D chart and the battle strip and the battle board here. So these used to be black on the back. Now they've got this kind of gray textured look. They fixed a bizarro error on the map. Now I've got a side-by-side -side here to make this a little bit easier to demonstrate. This is the old Hasbro printing. This is the new Renegade printing. In the old Hasbro printing, there's this weird error where some of the IPC values are circled and others are not. Um, I'm not really even sure how that happens. Either way, all the IPC values on the Renegade map are now circled. On the Europe map, some of the emblems and territory names had also been realigned for greater clarity. But other than that, the Europe map stayed the same. However, there were more changes to the Pacific map. Let's take a look at those. As they did in 1942 second edition, they put Honolulu on the correct island. They added a maple leaf to British Columbia. They labeled the Himalayas territory and changed the victory city icons on Calcutta and Sydney to correctly represent them as capital cities. For clarity, in all the games we've talked about so far, the number of actual components has stayed the same. You'll get the same number of mighty Russian battleships in the Renegade preprints as you were getting in the Hasbro 2012 printings. However, when it came to 1914, Larry Harris decided to speak up and wanted some additional physical pieces added to the game. So while the rest of the Renegade reprint of 1914 is entirely the same, the new version will come with four additional German infantry pieces, two more British infantry pieces, and it also comes with ten more light red and light blue chips, and five more dark red and dark blue chips. Finally, everyone has been absolutely going bonkers over the giant playmat that Renegade made for 1940 Global. If you haven't seen it, it is seven feet of awesomeness. Still, before paying the 60 bucks for this Axis and Allies yoga mat, some folks wanted to know if the playmat had any significant differences from the maps that actually come with Europe and Pacific. And the answer is that other than feeling like a mouse pad and being 20% bigger than the already huge out-of-the-box boards, there are no changes that would affect the play of the game. There are two cosmetic differences. The first is that the IPC tracker is now just 1 through 80 rather than being 1 through 40 twice. As for the other change, with all this space, they felt like they had room to include the research and development chart right there on the map. So there it is. And those are all the changes, corrections, improvements, whatever, that Renegade Games has made to the current printing of Axis and Allies. If you find a difference that I didn't mention and isn't in the FAQs and errata, please let us know in the comments. All right, let's see what those idiots have to say now. Any thoughts about how it all came together? Uh, well, I'm, first of all, I'm excited that uh, Renegade, has picked, Renegade has picked up this property. Uh, it, it, not that Hasbro did a bad job, but it didn't feel like they were promoting it very well, and they kind of just kept it going, which was okay. Um, and also, st having stock at that time with Hasbro was, it was a little difficult. So Renegade has been having everything in stock all the time. I'm really excited about that. Uh, so I'm looking forward to seeing where this line takes us. I know that we're, they're developing a new uh, Axis and Allies version, uh, which is going to be the North Africa right. uh, campaign, which I'm super excited about. Yeah, they did a big community poll to, mm -hmm. to get people to vote on a number of different scenarios that they could make a a local or you know a theater specific game about and north africa won hands down hands down uh, yeah. they they i think it's gonna be a really great game i think they're they're talking to larry harris about it and he's gonna be part of the development but i think we're looking at early next year uh, okay. i think is the plan for when that's gonna come out but of course we'll learn more as it'd they... be a nice addition to like the guadalcanal and battle of the bulge right. and things like that, so I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to that. We'll have that, we'll have a play night on that one, I guarantee. Oh yeah, we're, yeah, we're gonna make a, we're gonna make a thing about that, that ought to be fun. But, um, but so the next chapter of Axis Analysis has definitely begun with, uh, with what Renegade has picked up and carried on here. 
I'm excited to see how many new players the availability and extra press of this game uh, is able to create. I mean, there's a community out there now that, you know, is is strong, but more and more players in the game uh, definitely will help. And newer players. I, I've already experienced newer players. My son has created a community where he's at, uh, and he has multiple people, like, contacting me to get games to send them to where they are at. So, which is really cool for me because my, I grew up, my son grew up kind of watching me play and learning how to play there. And having the availability of these games, you know, uh, that they are now, I can, you know, ship them to him very quickly. And I encourage them to go to their local game store too, but they like to go to dad, so. Right. If your father owns a game store, you should feel free to, <laughs> to buy the games from, from, from him. And now a word from Shannon Merritt. Last time Gary and I did a complete overview of all Axis and Allies games uh, in the line. I had said that I had a Nova version on the way. I got that Nova version and we did an unboxing of that version. And I said that, hey, I have every version of Axis and Allies and I was not really worried about the Jedco version of the game because I felt like they were the same. Well, I was pointed out very, very many times uh, through email and through comments and all these things that I was 100% wrong and I did not have all the versions because I did not have the Jedco version. So, without further ado, this is the Nova version that we had and we opened up, uh, which I am very proud to own. Uh, I'm really excited to own this. And I went ahead and I went and saw a very good copy of the Jedco version of Axis and Allies that was being sold out of Australia. The gentleman and I communicated, and I went ahead and got the Jedco version, um, which is very, very, it wasn't in plastic wrap like this one was, but it's really awesome. It is somewhat the same. There are some minor differences to this version, but for all the naysayers, now, I have completed my collection, and it even came with this great expansion that is not necessarily in the Axis and Allies games, but it is an expansion for the game, an independent one. If I don't own every version now, hit me in the comments. Well, that's all we got for you today. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to give us a like and subscribe to the channel. If you want to see some of the other videos that we've done, they're around here someplace. And thank you so much for watching. My name is Gary Blevins, and this is Shannon Merritt plug from 901 Games and 901 Toys. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.